money. You're actually and not the American way. These damn bills that come out here all the damn time. Come out here in the last second. And I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people. How ashamed of are you? You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sick of it. Every year we give power to one person. It was not made that way in the Constitution. He was around when it was written. Now we give it. We pass rules that stop each one of us. Enough. Feel like somebody trying to be released from Egypt. Let my people go. My God, they sent me here to vote for them. They sent me here to vote, vote for them, to argue for them. But I'm trapped. I'm trapped with my rules that have been forced down our throats. Folks, we live in a democracy, but not here. But not here. So you go back and you tell your people, I'd like to do that, but the speaker has so much power, so much control. And each one of us do it in their districts. And have to go back and say that. And you can say on your side of the aisle, oh, no, no, that's not the case. Yes, you do. Folks, we live in a democracy, but not here, but not here. So you go back and you tell your people, I'd like to do that, but the speaker has so much power, so much control. And each one of us do it in their districts. And have to go back and say that. And you can say on your side of the aisle, oh, no, no, that's not the case. Yes, you do. All of us know you're going to When's it going to stop? Not the American way. These damn bills. They come out here all the damn time. Come out here in the last second. And I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people. Shalom. <clears throat> we are the real Hebrew Israelites. Come see week in, week out. Prophesying the return of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and His Heavenly Son, Yahweh Shai. All right. Uh, double honors to the apostles out in New York, a great millstone. Honor to all I can run the planet. But like I said, all praises to you, how about Shimmy How Shai, for this lesson. This is um, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, the 41st chapter and the fifth verse. The children of sinners are abominable children, and they that are conversant in the dwelling of the ungodly. What we see now is a nation of ungodly children who's captured the righteous children of the Lord who 33% of them two-thirds are ungodly and then all the heathens are ungodly so we're living in an ungodly country follow in a, on, on an ungodly planet following the wicked to the point now the wicked children of the wicked are complaining and sighing and crying vehemently over their treatment. All right. Uh, it says, verse 6 The inheritance of sinners' children shall perish, and their posterity shall have a perpetual reproach. Now, I'm going to read on and I'm going to go back to the video, and I got another video to examine of how they're complaining now. Of their own father, Esau, Edom, right? When we have niggers and spicks and tantos who disobey our own people and the Heavenly Father, and we call them sellouts, all right? We call them coons, all right? <clears throat> They're following the wicked. <coughs> but the wicked. They have no one to turn to because they are the wicked. That's why we say in John 8, 44, ye are your father the devil. All right? Because in John 8, 44, he was, they'll tell you he was a liar from the beginning, a murderer from the beginning. And you follow Esau Edom. Esau Edom been following their own narrative since the beginning. And they've been loving it. All right? Except when the Lord puts them down, which he's done it several times. All right? But right now, the Lord is about to do it again. All right? And now they're filling the 
the uh, the be, be, the beginning effects of their kingdom being taken down. All right, that's why they're complaining, and they got that perpetual reproach. All right, verse seven: the children will complain of an ungodly father because they shall be reproached for his sake. And that they're, they're not only reproached for his sake; they're actually feeling the curses come upon them that they have had upon us. This is Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So now, They told they were told that this is the uh, democracy, for, a rule of the people by the people for the people. See, but they didn't tell you that Demo, all right, could go for population, but Demo could also go for demon. All right, Krasi is rule. That's what the word Krasi goes back to Krasia, Latin for rulership. So demon rulership is what we're actually under not people rulership we're not and if you want to say oh, okay no that's what demo they've meant people it goes back to demons and blah 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 okay you want to go to etymology and the people rule having the people rule is the most dumbest motherfucking shit on the fucking planet are all people wise no if all people aren't wise can people pick a righteous ruler they're not wise <laughs> <clears throat> they're not wise enough to do so They're not all people are not wise. So why would you have all people rule? That is stupid. It's actually dumb and wicked. The most high says to have first of all if you're an Israelite Don't ever pick anyone to rule over you. That's not an Israelite. You got dumbass niggas voting and and stupid as fuck because they believe in this American democracy and and our American captivity it's in the scriptures you're supposed to have a judge a ruler a king a leader and he's supposed to be set up and ordained by the heavenly father and was most folks supposed to follow the law statutes, commandments of the heavenly father to rule the people king solomon said lord when the lord asked him what do you want what can i give you for taking care of my people leading the people he said lord how, how can i lead the people without wisdom so great of a people. Matter of fact, I gotta get it. Give me a second. Give me one second, Baba Kasha. This uh, I don't even know how to pull it up real fast. See if I can pull that up. Yeah, I think this is it. First Kings three. Sounds about right. So let's go to First Kings the third chapter. Yes, in the fifth verse. In the Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. Now don't get simple and say, Oh, it was a dream. This is just some, you know, he's a hocus pocus. Don't believe a dream, a dream, a dream, a dream. Because a dream can just be a dream. And just a fucking dream. This is the Lord coming and visiting and speaking to Solomon in a, an official capacity and that's why the Lord said everything that was written aforetime time was written for our learning this was the real deal holy field the Lord ch checking and challenging um, Solomon's spirit and and this was actually a holy dis uh, uh, discourse and exchange between the Lord Heavenly Father and King Solomon who in the reincarnation is who they call Jesus Christ now if you don't understand the scriptures and, and you kind of knew that's kind of deep and we can go into that, but that's not for this lesson. 
all right but lord willing we can go over it on another time and if you do ask questions in the comment board and then lord willing we'll put a lesson if you need so verse 6 and solomon said <laughs> what i should give thee wow lord damn well thou hast showed unto thy servant david my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day now you got me here yeah but dad was following you and he followed you and followed the law statutes, commandments and so forth and now O lord my god thou hast made me has made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or come in i'm young, a young man i'm like a kid i don't I, I don't know how to lead i don't know how to rule i haven't ruled nothing i don't know how to i i, 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 I don't know what to do and you asking me what are you gonna give me for to do what you want me to do and i don't even know what to do and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. Now you done handpicked out of all creation what you wanted to be your children. And you deemed and called and designated this is yours. A great people <laughs> that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude, because I have decided that damn many. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Give me an understanding mind. Give me a mind to actually understand people. And give me an, uh, to understand judgment. To understand your way, people in their way, in the righteous way. So I can tell the people how to be righteously. Because right now I don't know. And so Father, give it to me. Understanding. So I can lead the people. Which will show you this, the mindset of King Solomon and the mindset of righteous kings and the mindset of the righteous. Fuck us in particular. It's all about you, Father. And fuck us in particular is about you and then how to lead the people righteously. So, Lord, teach me and give me understanding on how you would have me lead the people and fuck me trying to lead the people off of what I want. Because if it was off of what I want, it ain't going to be cool because it's going to be what I want. And I don't want what I want because I, I don't know how to lead righteously. That's how, see, you can't make up righteousness. You have to be made righteous by the Father or made wicked by the Father. It's no in between the Israelites were made righteous and we went off the heathens were made wickedly they don't have the spirit of the father they don't understand the father so their perplexity comes from a lack of understanding of righteousness they can't be righteous because they don't know how to be righteous. They don't even have a conception of righteousness. So when they go to their father, which is Esau, Edom, they're, they're yelling and screaming and pulling their hair out because their father does not care for them. And matter of fact, it's a scripture that goes into that. Who is will be evil To themselves. So like it. Sirach fourteen and five. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. You're evil to yourself. That means you, your people, your posterity. See, you put chemtrails in the air to fuck up the righteous and whoever else follows the righteous and 
that's really who Esau puts it up for. And the and the and the fucking regular folks, so they can get sick and come and give him money. But the some of them folks is your own people. And nigga, you gotta breathe the same set air that's in the sky. So you're poison the sky to try to poison me, but you're also poisoning your people. And you're also poisoning yourself. That's the mindset of the rulership of this planet. Alright. He that is evil to himself. He's evil to his own self. And his own posterity. To whom will he be good? You can't be good for no one because you're not even good to yourself. You got to breathe the same set air. So, fuck, nigga, why are you poisoning the air? Why are you poisoning the water? Why are you poisoning the food? To get them Israelites. But nigga, your own people and yourself got to eat the same shit. So you think that you're good enough to get around the food. You think you're good enough to get around the water. But you can't get around the air. You got to breathe the same shit. Esau's the devil, man. That's why he will not take pleasure in his good. The Lord says, in the fullness. Matter of fact, I have to get that. No, sufficient. C. Job 20 and 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. And the word wicked means the laborer is the not wicked as in just evil people. It actually goes into, matter of fact, I got to show it now. Job 20 and 22. Because you all don't go into words. We got to do the work for you, you lazy motherfuckers. Job 20 and 22. Oh, we didn't know. Well, now we'll learn. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. All right, that word wicked goes into the word aimal, I, ma, and Allah, aimal, which means laborer, sufferer, wretched one, laborer, workman, sufferer, a toiling one. From the Strong's definition, toiler, someone who's toiling, someone who's toiling, worker, con concretely a laborer, figuratively someone who's sorrowful, that's laborer, that is a misery. Has taken a labor. I have no idea why they say wicked. Workman. Esau Edom, Edom threw that in there. To, 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 to try to thwart. The truth. Because every word. That shows you. That word in the Hebrew. Goes for four times. As a laborer. Two times as to take. One time as a workman. One time for misery. And then one time for wicked. But they're going to choose wicked to be. That word there in the English, that's bullshit. Alright? See, Esau Edom is the devil. So-called white man is the devil. And then he's causing everybody to be a laborer under him. Even his own. And now they're crying. This is the evidence of it. They're crying and sighing. And this is how the wicked feel about their father.
behind him and the guy in front of him and how they not surprised this was an Israelite in disguise because we've been mixed and mingled amongst the people and you see a lot of so-called Edomites and a lot of East East uh, looking people are actually Israelites you have a Bible belt all right that's ghost runs right first straight through um, Esau land that looks like Esau but there are is Israelites all right now I'm not saying this is an Israelite I don't know he does have a lot of passion and spirit, and he's coming against Esau. So it could, could come off that way. I don't know. But I'm looking at this bitch behind and this guy here. And as he's in his passionate speech, uh, speech begging for understanding of the, the bastardom in this so-called democracy, and they got the willingness to laugh. See, you laugh when something is beneath you. You laugh when something is, is funny to you. All right, and they're all smiling at him because they know that nigga, what, what's wrong with you? This is perfect. See, Esau Edom loves this the conditions and situations that the, the world is in right now because he's in rulership behind it. And you, if you're in rulership and you're cool, you're cool. But if you're actually suffering and you're hurting or you care, then you're not cool. Look, look at them, they're laughing. My God, they sit here to vote for them. Let my people go. My God, they sit here to vote for them. They sent me here to vote for them, to argue for them. But I'm trapped. I'm trapped with my rules that have been forced down our throats. Folks, we live in a democracy, but not here. But not here. So you go back and you tell your people, I'd like to do that, but the speaker has so much power, so much control, and each one of us doing their districts. Because you follow the dumb, stupid ideology of letting people who have no fucking idea of how to rule, to rule. Here's the king of Israel telling the Lord, Lord, I don't know how to rule unless you give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding then I might be able to rule the people. All right? And then I had one there and... Let's see if I can go that. I can't. I've got to go back to First King. Let me see, 20, I think. No, or is it at... No, First Kings 3, I believe. Salakia. Right. And the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee, verse 5. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto David 
my father great mercy according as he worked before thee, walked before thee in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that has given him a son to sit on his throne as as is this day and now o the lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered for or counted for multitude give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people i don't know how to judge lord give me an understanding mind give me an understanding heart help give me righteous judgment so i know how to right judge between the good and the bad because i don't know father and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing and god said unto him because thou hast asked this thing thou hast not asked for long life neither hast asked for riches for thyself nor have asked the life of thine enemies but have asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment behold i have done according to thy words lo i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any rise like unto thee. That's why this truth is so precious. Because the Lord set up our Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who they call Jesus, to rule with an understanding heart, an understanding mind, to rule the righteous people of the Lord and all peoples of creation. From the ants to the birds to the bees to the trees to so-called human beings, and this is not this is that the people in this world, this planet, don't I don't rule this way, don't know this way, they can't conceive this way. All right, and that's the reason why they're complaining of an ungodly father. You saw the passion in his voice. He's pissed. All right. Now I want to get this other clip. I had it, but uh... back and say our game is changing by the day. It, it's not so much even left versus right anymore but it's more normal versus elites and if you're angry with the state of the union you're in good company you're actually the norm nothing makes that more apparent than the song that rocketed to the top of the charts overnight rich men north of richmond this is a song about an ordinary guy middle of the road politically who just basically said what we're all thinking and he said it from the heart talking about an elite uniparty that's running our country while everyone else suffers I've listened to this a hundred times by now, and it resonates with me more and more every time. Rich men north of Richmond got me wondering why I'm not more mad, actually. Mad that I pay taxes on a home that I already own, paid for by a paycheck I already paid taxes on, that I fix with materials that I buy and pay more taxes on when I purchase them. Taxes that essentially have me working from January to June for free. You know, I was driving into work, listening to that song, thinking, look, I pay 50% of my income to government at various levels, and yet the bridge by my house has been closed for a year with not so much as a spray paint line on the ground or a start date. Yet, when I hit a pothole and get a flat tire on roads that I'm taxed to drive on, I have to wait on hold for hours sometimes to get a human only to tell me, sorry, we're not going to pay for your tire. I have no recourse. My dollars were 17 cents less than it was two years ago, but you don't reduce my taxes any. The government just burdens me. It's our problem to figure out where we're going to make up that other 17 cents. And the people who are supposed to be civil servants who work for the taxpayers, they're rarely civil, nor do I think they provide adequate service. Sorry, not sorry. They, they shut off your mics at town hall meetings and hang up on us when we, we yell at them for making a mistake. If, if I treated government the way they treated me, I'd be up to my eyeballs and fines and penalties. So yeah, that song resonates with me. The Pentagon loses $200 billion 
dollars. No problem. We give pallets of cash to countries that hate us. Millions on, on border walls half a world away, but can't be bothered to help Texas. Not to mention, I, you know, I'm angry that the average household is paying $700 more a month while we print trillions so they can go on their stupid government spending sprees. The rich men north of Richmond who want to take my gas stove to save the environment, they spent $930 million last year printing documents that were never read and they were just thrown away. But the government does this all the time. No one is ever held accountable. That's what this song is about. It's about them lighting millions of dollars on fire to do things like study shrimp running on treadmills. It can only muster $700 per person for the residents of Hawaii, who, by the way, just had their homes burned to the ground by a wildfire that was likely sparked by a downed wire from a company that spent most of its time trying to transition to green energy rather than operating a safe power grid. You mad yet? I am. This is our hard-earned money, confiscated tax money. And the same president whose son didn't pay a dime on $20 million of income just hired 87,000 new IRS agents, one of whom just shot a fellow agent by accident, by the way. They, they will string you and me up if we pay someone over $600 on Venmo. Please, Chuck Schumer, tell me more about why I should feel like you care. The same government that is telling me that I'm a domestic terrorist for being angry because I don't want my kids seeing drag shows in second grade, they just gave 80 billion dollars of night vision, fully automatic weapons, helicopters, Humvees, you name it, to the Taliban. But those same fools don't want us to have an AR-15? Maybe that's why this song is trending. You ever think about that? Because they're letting thieves, drug dealers, and even murderers out on the street in Manhattan, but refuse to let me get a lawfully obtained gun permit so I can protect myself from those people. They will leak the names and addresses of the lawful gun owners in California, spy on Catholic churches, and lock up a grandmother who was waved into the Capitol building on January 6th without a trial for months. But yet Jeffrey, did he really kill himself, Epstein, was locked up for trafficking minors to apparently no one. Where's the list? It makes a ton of sense that this song is so popular, right? Maybe the people brushing off Oliver Anthony as some sort of redneck in the woods should actually listen to the song instead of criticizing it. Hell, maybe you rich men north of Richmond should listen to all of us instead of always explaining why you think we're wrong. Come on down from your ivory tower. Drive a truck. Run a chainsaw. Work in a mine. Probably change your tune. Because us law-abiding Americans who foot the bill for all this BS... We're tired of it. We're tired of being the first ones taxed and the last ones considered. is changing, but see, so they're complaining. They're they're complaining of ungodly father, which is going to lead to the mass sedition. All right, and that's the reason why you cannot, uh, uh, you can't escape it. All right, there will be sedition. Um, yeah, that's a different one, Aaron. Cause see, we 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 are we 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 a different group of people. We 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 rise up against that bullshit. This is a. Uh, second measures fifteen sixteen. No, I can get some more meat off that bone. 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another. And and swords in their hands. And there shall be sedition among men in invading one another. They shall not regard the kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. So the Lord said that there should be sedition among men and invading one another. They should not regard their kings nor princes. In the course of their actions shall stand in power. 
the, the America is ripe for sedition. All right, America is ripe for sedition. Is ready. All right, let's go into that word sedition. I'm gonna end it. I'm not gonna keep it long. All right, etymology online. Sedition. Rebellion, uprising, revolt, factitious commotion in the state, concerted attempt to overthrow civil authority, violent strife between factions, civil or religious disorder, riot, rebelliousness against authority. All right? From Latin seditionum, civil disorder, dissension, strife, rebellion, mutiny, literally a going apart. All right? From said uh, without or apart, and uh, the other one to go. I know I got to get ready for work. Yeah, I thank you for reminding me. All right, so this is if this is what's coming to America. All right, uh, 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 the America is ripe for this sedition. It's ripe for it. And it's coming right soon. So keep enduring Akim. Keep enduring Akwath. Keep enduring the righteous children of the Heavenly Father. Keep putting up with the with the trials and tribulations and the hardships, the oppression, not only by Esau Edom, but now the heathens and our own people. The Lord sees it. The Lord is not ignoring it just because he's not acting upon every infraction immediately you have to remember the scripture says just because a sentence against the evil work isn't executed speedily the heart of the wicked is fully setting them to do wickedness the lord doesn't do it speedily because he's giving them a chance to repent and the lord this is part of the lord's time frame the lord got it all in control we can't look at every situation and, and oh, because of this a lot. No, the Lord sees it all. And the Lord is working on it all. Follow the Lord's plan and be patient within Him, and you will see the downfall of our enemies. Alright? It's happening because it's in the face. Look at them. They're the. the <laughs> Whoa, when we say they sign and crying, bro, they, they, they're, they're throwing proverbial fits. They're um, throwing fits. <laughs> American way. These damn bills that come out here all the damn time. Come out here in the last second. I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people. I'm ashamed of are you. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sick of it. He's mad. I'm telling you, he's mad. He's mad, Mad Max son. <laughs> right. you know, he's mad. And that and that's Rippling over to all Esau Edom, rippling over to all uh, of uh, the the wicked. Matter of fact, I think another one of my um, videos I have set up, and I think it's over here, is one of these. I think it's this one. Copy. Paste. Goes into a lot of the. Today I am putting a chip in my fingernail. You're coming with me. That, that's not the one. So I, uh, yeah. That's going to be a good one too. Um. Shit. You have to see how things really took a turn. Hold on. Um. See if I can find it real quickly. Inflation. Tick tock. Uh, yeah. Part on that, so you're on part six now. <laughs> part seven now. Oh, okay, that's perfect. I was looking for okay. As a matter of fact, let's look at part two today because for whatever reason, I was just really craving it. And all I did was get a foot long Italian BMT, and that shit cost me eleven sixty five. What happened to five dollar foot longs? I try not to complain too much, but. We just went to Taco Bell and got food for four of us, and it was $53.
This morning, we went to an upscale breakfast restaurant and got breakfast for all four of us, including an appetizer, and that was $66. So Taco Bell is almost the same exact price to feed a family of four as it is to go to an upscale breakfast restaurant. Make it make sense. I don't understand. I mean, I understand inflation's crazy, but this has to be greed. Taco Bell, I mean... We got three cheesy gorgita crunches and they were $14. So they're like four or five dollars a piece now for a taco at Taco Bell. A beefy five layer burrito is $3.89. I don't understand how this can't be inflation. Taco Bell used to be like a dollar. You could get a dollar. A beefy five layer burrito was like two bucks. I don't know, man. Make it make sense. This is insane to me. The, the price. This has to be price catching. So I live in a townhome and they just recently increased our rent. So when we first moved in, it was 2021 and we were paying 1,910 a month. That includes our internet. So that doesn't include, you know, other utilities. So that to me was expensive. And I was like, we're, that's, that's really expensive. So this year when we signed our lease, they said that they were going to increase our rent. And then to find out when they did increase it, it was actually $300. So the increase was $300. So now with that increase of $300, it's, I, I just don't understand how people can do this. So I don't understand how they expect people to live because between me and my husband, we make, I mean, we should, we make enough that we should be able to live comfortably. And this is a stretch. I have my brother that lives with me as a roommate, luckily, but this is just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't understand how people who are living off of minimum wage, which is literally $15 now. How are you guys surviving? How are you guys buying groceries? How are you guys having children? How are you guys paying for your car payments? I just don't understand. Like, how much longer is it going to be before people are literally just homeless at this point? And they're just taking just... They're just taking all this money and people are just suffering and I just don't understand how anybody can fucking afford anything right now. It's just fucking ridiculous. The U.S. is completely unhinged when it comes to our prices. So I'm in the middle of the country right now. I'm in the middle of Missouri where visiting my parents where they live and I just went to a local chain coffee shop and got a coffee. This latte, it's a medium oat milk latte. It cost me almost $8. Like, I'm not in a big city having a fancy coffee. This is a drive through coffee in the middle of Missouri just cost me $8. I swear, if millennials can't even afford their little treats anymore... up with how much it costs to eat like it's to the point where it's like how is we supposed to be the moms like the tiktok girlies where we taking our kids to the aquarium and it's 65 dollars per kid to get in the aquarium when we could barely feed them i spent 425 dollars on groceries a week and a half ago and i'm running out of stuff already i look in the freezer ain't nothing left but a half a pack of ground turkey and a whole chicken where is the rest of the food at i just grocery shopped the juice gone, eggs dwindling, like, it's too much. Then you can't even eat out either. Why is Wingstop $18.99 for a 10-piece? Since when? It used to be $10. $10 for a 10-piece with the fries back in the day. What is going on? Chipotle, 18 See, the scripture says, because victuals should be so cheap in those days. I got to get it. All right. See, they didn't say it's going to be cheap for the whole time. It's going to be cheap for a time before Esau pulls his move. All right. 
Second Ezra sixteen twenty one. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So how is victuals so cheap, which is one of the victuals is food, but then he said they're growing famine. That's the reason why they're dumping uh, uh, the milks, killing the cows, killing the chickens, and making a, a shortage in every single capacity so they can raise the rights, the, the, the rates up uh, uh, of every single commodity and, and, and fleece you and tax you to death. Esau, Edom, the, the elites have no give a fuck about you. They don't care. This is the reason why the people are signing crime. All right. Matter of fact, we're at the 45 minute mark. It's good. The point's proven. The earth, Babylon, is ripe for sedition. It's ripe. They've been pissed and fucked over everybody. Lord willing, this probably be my vibration today. I'll probably do another lesson a little bit going into these because I've been trying to do the part two in the uh, uh, inflation and uh, how it is affecting everybody. Now they got part seven. We're going to let the people tell you because you're not listening to the prophets. Well, maybe you listen to your fellow common ass man. All right. Which the wicked won't. The wicked will do wickedly. Only the righteous here. So this is really a call out to the righteous. Because only the righteous will go get it. All right. So hopefully you're part of the righteous because you're listening and tuning in. And may the Most High bless you and your family and keep you. All right. And to keep us collectively. So hopefully this has been edifying to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakadash. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakadash. Double honor to the apostles at New York, uh, agree at Millstone. Honor saw Akim around the planet, living with the name of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity. Definitely see Shalom and the Bible.